Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. I'm starting to work on episode four of my voiceover series, my Christmas voiceover series, I should say. But I'm going to move away from reeds today, and I'm going to concentrate more on what I've dubbed Cozy Corners. For those of you who don't know, I, am a, I have a blog. Its name is Country Craft Corner, and I have been blogging for over a year now. And I mostly blog about my crafts, but I also blog about our dogs and our travels. I uh, also talk about my weight loss struggles and other things in there too. It's just kind of a all over blog, but mostly about my crafts and decorating. And I've dubbed little vignettes or corners like this as my cozy corners. So today I'm going to go through a few cozy corners that I've created for Christmas this year, starting with this merry and bright corner. And I have a couple of other little tutorials that I might throw in there. Not very long. I'm not going to yammer on for long. But I'd like to share with you how I arrange these corners. I'm very symmetrical, so things need to look good to my eye and kind of drive myself crazy sometimes. But I work with them, work with these corners a lot, and I love creating them, and I love the, the end result. So stay tuned, and I'm gonna move on into the voiceover part of this video now. Hope everyone's having a great day. Be talking to you in just a minute. As I expressed in my introduction, I really enjoy creating what I have dubbed as cozy corners. They are a challenge, but once created, they really add to the overall decor of a room. Let me take a moment to explain that I use the same concept when creating cozy corners that I do when I create flower arrangements, hearth decor, as well as pretty much everything that I design. I start out with the basic items that I want to use to make the cozy corner design, flower arrangement, grouping, etc. I find that arranging things in different heights and using different textures within the design is important. Therefore, I always try to have several staple pieces of varying heights that are reused in any seasonal cozy corner design. Some staple pieces might be sitting in a corner or on the hearth or scattered on a shelf, and sometimes they are simply used as a receptacle to hold flower arrangements or different seasonal accent pieces. These staple pieces consist of an array of items such as wooden ladders, large crocks, baskets, trays, candle holders, etc. Also, when choosing the seasonal items that I add to the staples, I try to pick taller, shorter, fatter, and thinner items to give the eye a variety of fun things to gaze upon. Also, I use a lot of mini light strings in my decor. I love to sit and look at subtle, twinkling lights that meander through the groupings. With all that said, I change out my cozy corners three times a year. Let me show you the three different designs that I've created for this cozy corner that is obviously decorated for Christmas at this moment. Here is how the same corner will look in January. And then next fall, this is how it will look when I change everything to the autumn decor. My staple pieces for this corner are the large ladder, the basket, the two wooden stars, and my grandma's sewing basket. In order to make this into a Christmas cozy corner, I added a lit pine garland and I wrapped it around the ladder. Then came the merry and bright picture. It is held on with Velcro and pipe cleaners. I glued the pipe cleaners to the back of the frame and utilized them to tie the picture onto the rungs of the ladder. The angel went up next, then moving down and to the left, a Christmas quilt and pillows sitting atop the large basket. A little sign sitting on the pillows with some Christmas pics added in for interest. I sat that snowman on the top of the sewing basket. To finish it off, I added some Christmas ornaments to the garland and I tied a couple of plaid bows on.
Now I'll show you some of the other cozy corners that I created for this Christmas season. Here is the left side of the hearth and the right side. Let me quickly show you how I put that sleigh and basket decor piece together. Here are the supplies I used to complete that sweet little centerpiece. A basket or any large receptacle of your choosing. A sleigh. A small piece of stiffish pine garland. A piece of pine garland. The cheap stuff works just fine in this case. Pine cones, pip berries, and any other thing you might could use as a filler in the bottom of the basket. Doesn't have to be pretty, it will be hidden. Small burgundy and gold Christmas ornaments. Craft ribbon. A red berry bush. Small stuffed snowman. 15 count light strand. Pipe cleaners, wire cutters, and scissors. I started with a very old Lagerberger basket and I filled it up with mostly pine cones. You know, those ones that are sitting around as you enter stores that smell of really strong cinnamon. I saved a few back to be used in the design. Then I plopped an old Pipberry garland in there just to give me a little something more stable on which to lay my accent pieces. Next, I prepared the sleigh by taking a piece of stiffer pine garland and I tuffed it together added in some of the red berry stems and attached a bow to the center. I then attached it to the sleigh with a pipe cleaner. I stuck the sleigh in what I chose to be the back of the basket. This will sit in a corner and you won't be able to see the back side. Moving along to the basket itself, I laid a piece of green pine garland in and around on top of the pip berries and in front of the sleigh. I added the 15 count white light strand I just happen to have some here with a brown cord. I'm sure you could find some with a green cord. The color of the cord really doesn't make a difference as it is pretty much hidden in the basket. I added in some pine cones and more of the red berry stems. Then some of the little ornaments went in. I finished it off by perching the snowman up on one side of the basket. If your basket is tall enough, a nice touch is to tie a Christmas towel to one side to add interest. Snug the whole design back in the corner and you're good to go. Now you can build upon that nice large piece, choosing accents and varying heights, widths, and textures to make a cozy corner. All right, that about does it for episode four. Cozy corners are one of my most used little tricks of the trade. I utilize the same method in the smallest of spaces and also in larger and more spread out spaces. As you all know, cozy and warm is a feeling I always try to bring forth through my decorating. Cozy corners lend themselves beautifully to that basic design. Until next time, y'all take good care. Bye-bye now.